With the Australian Capital Territory Migration Program for Overseas Applicants opening again on the 12th of January, today I'm going to explain what you need to do to obtain sponsorship from the ACT for the 491 and 190 skills sponsored visas. Hi, I'm Carl Conrad and welcome to our channel where we explain the many complex requirements of migrating or visiting to Australia. We've been doing this now for 23 years and helped tens of thousands of clients obtain their visas to come to this wonderful country. Subscribe to this channel where we also provide the latest immigration news and updates as they're released. This opening up of the ACT was excellent news for applicants who have been waiting to migrate to Canberra. As part of the migration program, a new Canberra matrix for overseas applicants was also also made available. The ACT invitation rounds now include the matrix scores necessary for overseas applicants. You can find a link in the description below on how to find these invitation scores. We also have more information on our website with our new article about the Canberra matrix for offshore applicants. Let's look at these criteria for the subclass 491 nominations and the 190 visa nominations. They have significant similarities and differences between these two visa classes. Firstly, the 491 nominations. You need to nominate nominate an occupation on the latest ACT critical skills list, which means having a positive skill assessment in that occupation. You must also be currently working in this nominated occupation. You need to have at least three years of full-time postgraduate work experience in your nominated occupation. This work experience must be verified by the relevant skill assessment body. If your occupation requires it, you need to have relevant Australian registration or licensing for your nominated occupation. You must also do your research about the ACT labour market and present these findings in your application to demonstrate that you can find work in the ACT upon your arrival. For the 190 nominations like the 491 nominations, you need to have a nominated occupation that's on the latest ACT criticals list. If required also, you need to have relevant Australian registrations or licensing for your nominated occupation. However, this is where the similarity ends. For the 190 nomination, you have to have a full-time job offer in your occupation. The job must be in Canberra and for at least two years. Your employer needs to be a medium or large Australian enterprise operating in Canberra. Your job cannot be online or in a serviced office or home-based work. The offered position must be genuine where the business cannot find a local employee to do your work. They will need to provide a statutory declaration to outline the need for this position and that they are unable to find local staff to fill this occupation. For both the 491 and the 190 visa, there are some common criteria for for both nominations. You need to meet English requirements of the Immigration Department's definition of proficient or superior English. However, if you have a passport from the United Kingdom, America, Canada, New Zealand or Ireland, you do not have to complete an English test to meet these levels. If you plan to claim points for your spouse or partner, then you must have proof of the relationship. This can either be a marriage certificate or a civil partnership or a union certificate. Unfortunately, you cannot claim points if you are in a de facto relationship. Your partner also needs to meet the competent English requirement if you are planning to claim points with their employment category. In utilizing this offshore category, you and your migrating dependents need to be living overseas, have not lived in Australia for at least 12 months, do not hold a current Australian visa or any bridging visas except for a visitor visa. Most importantly, you need to demonstrate a commitment to living in Canberra. First, you need to find out more about Canberra and you must do your your research about the Canberra lifestyle. After that, based on your research, you will need to write a statement explaining your future dreams of a lifestyle in Canberra. Also, you need to sign a declaration that says you will be living and working in Canberra for at least two years from the date you come to Australia. You'll also need to sign a funds declaration form outlining what funds you have access to to help support your settlement in the ACT. The current application fee to the ACT is currently $300. Those who have have completed a PhD in the ACT have their own streamlined nomination pathway for overseas applicants. You can apply for the ACT PhD streamlined nomination if you were awarded a professional or research doctoral degree from an ACT university within the last two years. Of course, before you can even apply to the ACT, you will need to complete the Canberra matrix where you'll be allocated a point score and then wait for the government to invite you to apply. You cannot apply directly to the ACT without this invitation. So what is the Canberra matrix you ask? The Canberra matrix is a points-based system and the highest score
scores will have the best chance of selection. It contains specific information about skilled employment, English proficiency, formal qualifications, length of ACT, residence, study in the ACT, investment activity and close family ties and other criteria. These criteria attract point scores and remember this system is completely independent of the Immigration Department's Expression of Interest point system. Those who meet the PhD pathway will not be competing with others on a points level as you have a streamlined system. The ACT government's website has an easy to follow Canberra Matrix page and we'll leave a link in the description below. We also have an article on our blog page to assist you for further information if you'd like to take a read. You can see then obtaining an invitation to apply to the ACT through the Canberra Matrix is a complicated exercise. However, it is free to complete and as long as your occupation is on the critical skills list and you meet the nomination criteria, it is worth trying out for. If you need our assistance then please book a consultation with us via Zoom, Skype or the telephone. During our consultations we talk to you through this ACT system. If the ACT turns out not suitable for you then we'll also cover which other states or territories may be good options for you. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook as well to keep up to date with the latest requirements and as always take care out there and I'll see you next time. So bye for now. Thank you.